what is going on with EV charging hubs? There appears to be a battle royal developing, yet their actual use defies logic. With a 42 bay hub that charges 50 pence per kilowatt hour, nobody's using it. Yet elsewhere, another hub that charges 51p is absolutely heaving with EVs queuing. New hubs are opened that remain empty, while the latest announcement is to build the largest ultra-rapid hub in Europe. This is crazy. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. With the channel, I travel the country with journalists visiting EV chargers at all times of the day and night, right throughout the country, filming as we go. And the situation we're finding at the moment is really weird. Viewers were recently invited to provide us with the location of the busiest charges in the UK for us to go and film. Yet when we get there, at the times we're told they're guaranteed to be queues, we find it almost deserted. In fact, for the last two and a half years since starting the channel, we've never had to queue to charge. Ever. Not even once. We've seen queues, certainly. We've gone out looking for them and filmed them on occasions. But whenever we've charged, we have never experienced a queue. Now, we have less than 2 million BVs on the road in the UK. Oh, by the way, BEV, it simply means battery electric vehicles, BEV. It's needed because the industry often calls hybrids EVs or electric, which is totally misleading. Yes, a PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, has an electric capability, but for the vast majority, the primary drive is petrol. It is the main reason most people choose a PHEV over BEV. They want or need the ability to drive it as a petrol car when needed. But while the growth of PHEVs is amazing, they still number only about half of the number of BEVs on the road in the UK. One and a half million BEVs to no more than 800,000 PHEVs. This is sourced from ZapMap, SMMT and the RAC Foundation. The BEV trend is growing as people realise that if they can run that PHEV with a range of 60 to 80 miles on battery most of the time, which many viewers claim they do, then they could easily run a BVV with a range of over 200 miles. Also brings a realisation that range anxiety is actually a made-up issue. The average annual mileage in the UK is still dropping, now it's heading towards 7,000 miles a year. It's just 140 miles a week. While the average range of an EV is increasing, it's now well over 200 miles, many are now above 300 miles. Do the maths yourself. 90% of the UK population would manage perfectly well with a full BEV. Alongside that, the charging infrastructure is changing equally rapidly. The number of public charging points added has been astronomical. 2021, 28,000. 2023, 54,000. 2024, 73,000. And last month alone, we added nearly 3,000 new devices. The actual situ situation today is very different from just a few years ago. Government has a target to take the current total of 114,700 connectors to around 480,000 by 2035, requiring the addition, according to them, about 53,000 new ones a year. In simple maths, I work out we already have in 2025 one quarter of that needed in 10 years' time. Yet we only have 10% of the EVs on the road that are predicted also by 2035. The government believes we should have 30 EVs per charging point. Today we only have 13. Could this explain why so many are empty? Well, sadly, no, it doesn't. Look at the utilisation prevents a few wild facts. The average fast AC charger below 50 kilowatts only sees one session per day. One! Where does this data come from? Because that's clearly ridiculous, ludicrous figure. But no, from ZapMap, which the Government Department of Transport uses for their official data. And they analysed over 65,000 connected devices, which represents 85% of all the UK total chargers. Well, surely the rapid and ultra-rapid chargers are better utilised. Yes and no. They average just over four sessions per day. Four times as many, but a drastic figure nonetheless. How about charging times? We hear about charges being blocked by EVs, taking several hours, causing massive queues. Well, no, once again. The average time spent plugged into a fast AC charger and actually charging is only three hours. 
Yeah, I might leave my EV plugged in outside for 10 or 12 hours while I sleep. It's not charging the whole time, the whole night. In fact, barely long enough for me to fall asleep on many occasions. But surely ultra rapid chargers are used for longer. Nope, quite the opposite. Despite all the scare stories, the average duration of a charging session at a public ultra rapid charger is 45 minutes. Well, this throws up some very strange statistics. We already have far too many public EV chargers, yet the ones we do have are barely being used. Yet, new hubs are still being added at a frantic pace. Looked at another way, if we had no more public chargers at all after today, and the number of EVs on the roads in the UK reached the 14 million predicted by 2035, then it looks like we already have enough chargers. In fact, more than enough. See, we have now an average of something like four sessions per day per charger, uh, ultra-rapid each for 45 minutes, about 200 minutes, around three hours per day for ultra-rapids. And we have one session per day for 200 minutes, also about three hours a day, at the average fast charger. That's what we have now. A typical charger, fast, rapid or ultra-rapid, is working just three hours a day. Yet almost all are open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So just when are they busy? Well, a fast charge is obviously designed to be slow trickle charges, best used overnight. But we see they're busiest between 8am and 8pm, daytime. Overnight, they're hardly used. Well, that makes little sense. These charges in the report do not include home charging, which is almost exclusively overnight, nor do they include workplace chargers, as most of these are not open to the general public, but they do charge during the day. We find ourselves in a really strange situation that would appear to have no basis in reality. We go out, we regularly film EV chargers, very busy, near full utilisation, sometimes even film queues. And viewers still comment they have to queue and they have nowhere near enough choice. Our filming, however, reveals a growing trend. Well, maybe problem is a better word. For every packed charging location we can find and film like the Trafford Centre, Manchester with 18 bays and regular queues, we come across multiple empty charger locations. Recent trip found a 16 bay Osprey installation with zero cars there during the hour we were there filming. Nearby, a 14 bay BE.EV location had never more than three cars charging during the two hours we were there filming. And the 12 bay GridServe location had also zero cars charging when we visited. But here's the surprise the Trafford Centre is our go to location to film queues. Yesterday we went, at lunchtime, it's normally very busy, we found over half the bays were available, empty, just waiting for an EV. And we were there for well over an hour, never saw it full. And to confuse the matter further, the Trafford Centre is soon to get a massive new charger installation, which will be the biggest in Europe. Well, if you want to find out more about this new edition, please subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss it when we launch that video. Well, we find the results of our visits, plus the research we undertake, nearly all these locations have live availability for us via their apps or their websites, um, and it backs up all the data which many readers will dispute. I know we will get a string of comments along the lines of, what a rubbish video, my local charge is always busy, I can never find a vacant bay. I always have to queue. And you might well be right for some of the day. But before you fire off that nasty comment, please take the opportunity to visit that exact same charger at a different time, maybe eight o'clock in the evening, or six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. See, even if it's totally full for the full eight hours during office and peak hours, and none actually are, I can pretty much guarantee that it's almost absolutely totally deserted for the other 16 hours in every day. Now this brings me to the question you're dying for me to answer. If multiple large hubs, well hub being eight bays or more, are empty for almost the entire day, just who on earth is building new ones? <laughs> it's a cracking question. We well, get back to my favourite subject of business models. On the day of opening a new business, the owners will normally have produced a business model or plan as to how busy they expect to get when they open 
and when they get to that point in time and how long it will take to break into profit. It's all in a business plan. On opening, they actually get to find out just how accurate their plan actually turns out to be. In an ideal world, the sales, in this case charging sessions, will match the business plan. That might not make any sense to us onlookers who don't know how much they spent, what their overheads are, and how much they make per session, but the result in an ideal world will be matching exactly what was planned. It's quite possible that they only need six charging sessions of 50 kilowatt hours per day to break into profit. And when we arrived to film, the site was just winding down from a very busy morning, which saw far more than the six. It is really dangerous to predict or report anything based on a single visit at a specific time of day and specific day of the week. Just an example, we have in Preston a fireworks shop. Now, I might be wrong, but on the average day, we don't set off fireworks. So this can hardly be selling that many on an average day. But come November and then Christmas and New Year, they might easily do enough business to hit all their targets and make an overall profit. Same goes for holiday hotels. Packed in the season, quiet off season. But these charger installations are not cheap to build nor quick. One suggestion we explored is to see if they're just getting in now before the demand skyrockets. In effect, what they're doing is blocking that site from any other CPOs turning up to grab and they sit back waiting patiently. But makes little sense. Why install 16 charges and 16 bays? You could effectively block the site with just two charges and leave room for expansion at a later date when the demand peaks. A two-bay charge also might not actually need any additional electric supply on opening, but you can add that at a later date. That doesn't make any sense to me. But I have a number of interviews lined up where I will be asking CPO CEOs those exact questions. The most logical reason for empty charges in some locations and queues in others would just simply be price. Surely a really cheap charger would be heaving and an expensive one would be deserted. That's logical. But it's also not what we see. Some of the busiest charges are also very expensive and some really cheap ones are deserted. Well, a few examples from recent filming trips proves this point. Manor Farm, on the outskirts of Liverpool for Osprey was deserted, 16 charges, but at 82p that would seem logical. Rugby services, M6, grid serve, 36 bays, also 82p. That's crowded at times. That's additionally not logical as there are other charges very nearby, less than a mile away, that are charging 50 pence per kilowatt hour and they are empty. In Stavold Hub in Winchester, 44 bays, all at 50 pence, day and night, deserted. Instavolt Banbury, 32 bays, 82p, equally deserted. Ionity Village Hotels, 12 bays and with membership, prices down to 43 pence, almost deserted. Grid serve Braintree, 36 out of 46 available, all the 82p. Now with so many hubs being effectively empty, why are new ones being installed at such a rate? Including, soon to be the largest in Europe. Well, it seems obvious as someone somewhere believes or knows that the demand is there at that location for that specific charger at whatever price they choose to offer when it opens. Now that's not a job I envy. I personally believe that many CPOs produced their business plans a number of years ago in much better times, forecasting even better times ahead as the number of EVs on the roads grew. But over the following few years, as they were going through the planning, legal, DNOs and construction phases, the market has dramatically changed, totally negating their plans, in my opinion, when they eventually opened. Now, if that is the case, then we're in for a drastic culling of the EV charging locations in favour of those that got their business plan right, or those who just have a much better plan in the first place that will survive and thrive on opening day. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to see the footage we shoot but never release on YouTube, and consider becoming a member to support the channel. You get access to far more videos than we release on YouTube. You also get behind the scenes footage plus bloopers. Nope, don't always get right everything first time.
Plus, you get to see all of our videos ahead of their release on YouTube. Memberships start from just a few pounds a month. That's Patreon or your YouTube members. Details for that are down below. Thanks very much. I'm Dave.